Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing a new movie review this week, but it's a B-horror film that was made in 1990, but it was also considered to be one of the worst movies ever made. It's called Troll 2, and it's not to be confused with the first Troll movie, which eventually is not a sequel to the, the original film at all. It's actually a different movie, which it's sort of misleading because the movie isn't really focusing more on trolls. In fact, it's actually focusing more on goblins than trolls. So, one of the strangest films that I've ever seen that I just couldn't believe this was considered to be a guilty pleasure for everybody. That they later did a documentary of this movie called Best Worst Movie which I think you guys should check that one out for the whole documentary behind Troll 2. Anyway, it stars Michael Stevenson, George Harley, Marco Prey, Connie Young, Robert Onsby, Deborah Reed, Jason Wright, Darren Erring, and Jason Steadman. As the film opens, Joshua Waits, a young kid, lives with his family at a local town, which eventually he's reading a bedtime story with his late grandfather, Seth, who eventually had died six months ago. He's reading a story about goblins chasing a, a young man who eventually turned into a plant later on. Prior to this, uh, Joshua and his family decided to take a family trip all the way to Nimblog which turns out to be a small and strange half empty town and Nimblog of course is spelled backwards as Goblin go figure and somehow they spotted some weird and strange people and they decided to greet the family on an empty house with filled with lots of food on the table all set up which turns out that the food itself might might contain something that the goblins might have put inside the food that causes them to end up in their spill and of course Joss had to try to stop them from eating them so they'll end up in that situation so then but Joshua alone had discovered pretty much the entire secret behind the town and that's when things started to go downhill from there as an evil goblin queen started to take one of the guests at this rate one of the daughter's boyfriend's friends was actually taken by the evil queen and the boyfriend's friend by the name of Arnold decided to take him inside to that mysterious dungeon which eventually turns the other girl that he just found outside of the woods that's being attacked by goblins her into goblin food which is all green and, and nasty you know and all these goobly stuff in included and eventually turns into a tree so it's up to Joshua and his imaginary grandfather but to stop these evil goblins as well as the goblin queen for harming everybody in this godforsaken town oh boy I tell you this though watching this movie is like sitting it's like you just feel stone and <laughs> it mystified of what's totally wrong with this production. But as far as watching this movie, it's like it's like somehow you just feeling like you're watching something that's so mysteriously weird that you never know what's going to happen. But it's just so funny nevertheless. I do like the music though that they put into this movie. It does feel like it's from the 80s and 90s all the way. They're all done in synthesizers. And it also has some great cinematography in this movie. I, I couldn't believe how how beautiful these shots really are. <laughs> yes, I, I'm so surprised I'm saying this because of this dreadful B movie that I've just seen. But it's so laughable and it's so entertaining that you just can't help but love it. In fact, there's one funny scene in this movie that just seems to go off the wall, such as the scene with where Arnold got stuck while drinking the broth, 
that uh, Eagle Queen just made, and then he just saw, he stopped and stared and worried about what he just saw, and that girl turning into goblin food, and he says, they're eating her, and they're going to eat me. Oh my god! Yeah, with the fly stuck on his forehead. It was just so <laughs> hilariously bad that I just couldn't believe it. And and also the fact that Joshua had to pee on their food while they're all you know stuck in freeze frame mode, which you can tell they're actually shaking while they're still in there. It's just so hilarious. And I also like the part where his father dragged him all the way up to his bedroom and he keeps saying, you see this name? You know what I like to call it? Hospitality. Yeah. Oh man, this movie is just so hilarious. I just can't help but love how badly this movie was made. Of how cheesy it looks and how crazy this is going on. And how the food looks like eventually all green. It's like, wow. I mean, this is one trippy, strange film after another. It's kind of amazing since this movie came out in 1990, but it felt like it, it was made in the 80s with a mix of 90s into it. Because I could tell from some of the imagery, it felt like it was filmed that year. And I'm so surprised that this movie was not related to the first movie. And I'm surprised to know because MGM did release a double feature DVD with the two films. And they act like this was part of the series. It's just, it's just totally weird you know, how they did this. But anyway, I really did enjoy this film for what it's worth. It's a B movie, but you just can't help but love it. It's a guilty pleasure. And I think it kind of ranks up there with The Room and Plan 9 from Outer Space. Because, let's face it, these are like the fun-loving B-movies you just ever imagined what to see. But you just can't help but love it instead of hating it. Because, trust me, there have been a lot of bad movies out there that are way worse than Troll 2 and Plan 9 from Outer Space and pretty much anything. This is probably the best B-movie I've ever seen and I totally mean it. You're gonna be having a crazy time watching this film. Especially if it's on TV or unless you buy it on Blu-ray or DVD or whatever. And maybe rent it somewhere. You just can't help but love it. So anyway, I give Troll 2 a ridiculously two stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.